Good evening, everyone, or good morning, or good whatever time you are watching this video. We are here once again to take a look at a bicycle. I always like to reiterate this that this is going to be a like a first impressions video. So we're going to do the weight on the bike, build quality, that sort of thing. But this is by no means a a straight up review. I do believe that you cannot really do a, a good quality review of a bicycle until you've put a lot of time in the saddle on the bike. And a lot of you really liked the first impressions videos of like the more budget friendly bikes. I guess not a lot of people are doing these and I did realize that I have not done one from Gary Turner yet. Uh, so this is a good opportunity. We've got the Sensor Sport. It is a good budget friendly, I guess you'd call it an all mountain bike. Kind of does a little bit of everything. But if you do have something that you would like for me to, to actually do a little first impressions or even a review like I have been doing with the Orbea Oys lately, uh, just let me know in the comments. Um, I can get my hands on a lot of stuff from Giant, GT, Salsa, Orbea, Bianchi, I think that might be it. But I also do quite enjoy it when you hit the subscribe and the like button. So in all honesty, I have loved GT Gary Turners since before I was born. The iDrive was a revolutionary piece of machinery, even by today's standards. It is a funky, funky design if you haven't checked out what that is. I suggest you do it. I'll leave a link to another video. But they are now owned by the same company that owns Cannondale. Uh, that would be Darrell Industries. And they own a few other brands. But, uh, you know, I digress. GT can still make a killer bike. They're, they're still their own thing. That's about enough for uh, the intro today. Let's just get to Shopperino and we can dive into this machine. Let's go. This, my guys, is the GT Sensor Sport. It retails at a whopping two grand, and I, I held off on this bike for a while. Uh, why? Because it was priced kind of odd in the lineup that we have. Like whenever you compare this bike to, say, the Stance, so you've got the Stance, it's at 1550 that comes with SX drivetrain, like what this one has. You've got the Stance, it's like 1700, and then you jump up to the Trance. Now all those are from Giant, I'm just using them as comparison. Uh, you can get a Trance starting at the low uh, 2000s, I think it's like 21 or 2200, somewhere around there. This bike comes in right at two grand, and it did not come with a dropper post. That was kind of a letdown for something that I consider to be more of an all mountain bike. Uh, but I believe that's also because of the price point. That's how they get the price point down. So once I actually got my hands on one of these things, kind of changed my mind a little bit. It is a very well-built bike, and I think it is built with a specific person in mind. So let's go through the specs first, and then I'll get into the pros and cons of this bicycle. So if we start with the front end of the bike, it does come with a RockShox Recon. That is a price point good for it's not a revelation or a reba or anything like that but if you've never had an air suspension this is an awesome bike gt actually did a bike called the verb i don't even know if it's in production still a couple years ago that was their true price point full suspension bike and it had a pogo stick on the front and an air in the rear and you want to talk about a weird feeling bike i'm just glad they don't do that anymore this is a much better option even though it's about a thousand dollars more it does have your you know your compression damper on here so you can somewhat lock it out it's an air shock it's a recon 
It's not a bad fork, but it's not top of the line by any means. It reflects the price point appropriately. The brakes, they're Tektro brakes. Tektro is not as bad as SRAM, not as good as Shimano. I've never really had that much problem out of the Tektros. I do like that they go ahead and stick the 180 mil rotors on it since this is more of an all mountain bike. And they do use mineral oil, which I think is a big plus in my book. The tires, uh, WTB Rangers, not terrible tires. I don't know if they're actually tubeless tires, but the Alex rims are supposed to be tubeless. That is what we were told. Hmm. Well, I'm going to have to do a little bit of inspection further because I don't want to lie to you guys. Their spec sheet says that these rims are tubeless, but I'm not actually seeing it plastered on here. And as many of you probably know, if they're tubeless, it usually says it all over the place. I will look into this further. So when we move back to the drivetrain, it does come with full SX drivetrain, one by 12, got the dinner plate, check. So that is a modern drivetrain. That's what all the bikes are coming with. I would, it's not my favorite drivetrain because it is the entry level into the 12 speed, but you can get NX or even GX for, for pretty nominal prices on the upgrade. So what I've been doing, anyone that comes in with a derailleur that's been or ripped off and they need a new one, most people have just been upgrading to like an NX. It's, they're just more well built. The SX has a lot of plastic on it. I'm just seeing them break rather easy, if I'm gonna be honest. So the X-Fusion rear shock, not bad, not bad at all. It does come with you know the two settings on the back here. You do have your rebound that you can play with. Uh, I would put that in line with the front shock, so they're not, you know, it's weird. I would rather have a bike spec with appropriate or equivalent uh, front and rear suspension than I would having a really nice rear shock and a, sh and a crappy front shock. <laughs> That's only because they're going to feel similar and I would rather the bike feel uh, the same, I guess, from front to back, not have like some plush, amazing front fork and a crappy rear shock or vice versa. If you get what I mean, like it just, it, it throws it off and you notice it. I do anyway. So moving to the back end of the bike. So when we look at this suspension, it is kind of like GT's modified version of the horse link. Uh, that's because it does have a pivot back here. My understanding and my experience with these bikes, when you have that pivot in the back, it does help a lot with like small bump compliance. So the benefit of this bike, why would you buy this one over something like a Stance? Because that Stance is an amazing bike at that price point, it's 1550 bucks. So basically it doesn't have this rear pivot on it. Um, the Stance doesn't, this one does. So this is going to ride a lot nicer. GT, if you follow them at all, way more known for their downhill oriented bicycles. That's where they get their, their, their big sales from, I would say. Um, something that's got at least 150 travel and above. So everything that GT does, they focus, or the suspension, the way the bike is set up seems to focus more on how well it absorbs the hits, the bumps, the downhills, uh, and then the pedaling efficiency is secondary. So that turns a lot of people off whenever the suspension gets lower. This is a 130 mil travel bike. One thing I do love about this bike though, when you really start looking at how it is built, it's almost like they designed it for someone that wants to work on their own crap. So it does have a threaded bottom bracket, so there's not cups that you have to press in and out. Um, it does have all external cable routing. Now for me, I love internal cable routing and how it looks, but since I work on bikes all day, I love external. I love it when a bike comes in and like change my cables and it's external. It is so much easier. Some bikes are sleeved to make that internal cable routing easier, but those sleeves, it's not 100% every time and sometimes you gotta go fishing. But everything about this bike, if you wanna learn how to work on your own mountain bike and you want something that you can more than likely fix easily, this bike is it. The only negative thing I can really say about this build at this price point is it does not have a dropper post. And you can get a dropper post for like 150 bucks that'll put this bike in line with the trance price point wise. Um, but that's the only real negative and installing said dropper post is probably gonna be freaking easy because it's all external. They do have the port right down here behind the rear shock for you to run an internal dropper post, uh, which is it's way, way better than an external dropper post. The external ones I don't care for because depending on where the cable is, it can kink the cable and it'll actually maybe hit the frame or hit your rear tire. This bike doesn't revolutionize 
anything, but it is a good solid piece. It's like they just took it and they're like, how can we make this bike um, as easy to work on for the consumer and still a great build quality. So yeah, guys, I had a lot of people saying that they were enjoying the more price point oriented bikes, reviewing them, getting the weight on them. So that's why I wanted to get this one out there. I had a lot of requests to do a GT sensor. All right, everyone, so quick update. The wheels are in fact tubeless. I popped the tire off the bead and checked. I also just looked up the model. They are in fact tubeless, but as I said before, every other wheel set I've dealt with actually has it plastered on the rim somewhere. These wheels did not, and that's why I just wanted to double check. So again, the wheels are tubeless. Now, let's move on to the weight of the bicycle. So if you follow GT whatsoever, they have always been known for having a little bit heavier bike, but the bikes are bomb-proof. This bike comes in at 35 pounds. So as you all know, I race cross-country, so I am used to bicycles that are 10 pounds less or more than this bike. Um, like I said, that is not what the intended purpose of this bike is for. This is supposed to be a bomb-proof uh, sensor, smaller travel bike that can just take a beating. So I'm not entirely surprised by the weight. I did think it would be closer to 30 than 35, but you know, you can just take a poop before you ride and you'll be all right. Hope this was helpful. I will see you all in the next one. Later.